They hold grudges. Your bird could bite you. Screams like a girl, acts like a big baby. Hello, my fellow sniffers and flighters. My name is Marlene McCohen, and this is Vinny, and we have a very special video for you today that Vinny doesn't really want to participate in because it doesn't make him look so good, but he's here. He's just trying to leave. Now, before we go on, I want to give some shout outs to those of you in my Flighters Club. I want to give a shout out to Courtney Frame, Amy Sawada, Holly Martino, Meg Kate, Therese Brooks, Joanna, and Casey Minter. Okay, so today we have a very special video for you, and I think this this video is honestly very important because these birds look like the coolest, most fun birds in the world. And if you ever met one personally, especially if you went into a bird store and you met a baby that are absolutely the sweetest birds that are gonna steal your heart. I have met people years and years later, people that I don't know, but I ran into them because I was walking around with Jersey on the street in a bank somewhere. And they all have been like, no, a pink cockatoo that I fell in love with and I'm still dreaming of. So I get it. This has happened to me millions of times and most of those times it's been the same bird that I had met in the bird store and fell in love with. I know how it feels but I'm here to tell you how it really is. Before we go on I just want to let you know a little something about Vinny. Vinny is a gala cockatoo and you Australians will always say that I pronounced that wrong. In America he's known as a rose-breasted cockatoo. Australians will also say say, you can't say gala cockatoo, it's a gala or a cocky. And the thing is, sometimes Australians don't even know that these birds are one of 21 species of cockatoo. There are people that don't know that at all. But see, here in America, we don't even know what a parrot is. I'm not kidding you. You guys have the luxury of having these beautiful birds and I see videos of them kind of like coming to your balconies and patios and it's wonderful because you guys know about their personality and you get to experience them daily. But in America, unfortunately, the two parrot species that we did have natively are gone now. So here, people are not very acquainted with birds. Of course, there are people that are, but basically we describe them kind of like how you would say Siamese cat, or we say what type of cockatoo a bird is because people don't even know if that's a parrot or not. That's how it works over here. So let's get that out of the way. All right, so I am here to give you six reasons why gala cockatoos are not for you. And by the way, they might be for you, but you have to have all the information possible, things that you didn't know. And also I feel like Vinny makes himself look extremely cool. And I think Vinny kind of makes you guys really want a Vinny and he is an amazing bird, but I got to tell you all the negative because it's my job to prepare you for commitments to parrots. Again, these are in no particular order. The first thing is that they hold grudges, mostly because they are so smart. You could have a great day with your bird 28 days in a row, and then one day you get called into work, you have a very long day, you come home extremely tired, you don't get to spend as much time with the bird as you want, and the bird you thought like was gonna reciprocate your love, and he's just like mad, he's holding a grudge. He could be holding a grudge tomorrow for what you did yesterday. I know that sounds crazy guys, but I have so much evidence of this. In fact, Vinny has displayed some crazy antics. Vinny sometimes gets territorial over things. He likes to play with cardboard. There was a time when he had this new cardboard box and my sister went over and touched it. He was fine and 10 minutes later, he got mad at her for it. And the evidence that that was the reason he got mad was because he's done that multiple times. We knew it was gonna happen, we warned her and then as evidence would have it, it was proved correct. So these birds are so smart, they can hold grudges. And if you're not able to kind of deduce what you might have done four hours ago, five hours ago, yesterday to upset the bird, then you are not gonna be the right candidate because you're gonna think that everything is moment to moment like it is with other animals where, you know, you might have affected an animal right now and it reacts and you're now met with a bird that is reacting to you now for something that you did before. So that's the first thing and a cockatoo grudge is a very special kind of grudge. That brings us to reason number two. 
speaking of grudges, guess what could happen? Your bird could bite you. Now remember guys, every bird is different. You may have the perfect gala cockatoo that never bit you. You may also have the perfect gala cockatoo that hasn't hit his hormonal period yet, so you haven't gotten to experience what the rest of us have. But when these birds bite. Now keep in mind, Vinny is a rescue. I don't even know where he came from or what his history is, which is a lot more difficult to deal with than if I would have been able to imprint myself on him, but no less because he is much more entertaining than any bird I could have ever had in my life. So I consider Vinny extremely special and I'm so thankful for everything about his personality, just the way he is. But when Vinny bites, and by the way, I have a lot of friends with rose-breasted cockatoos and they say the same thing. When they bite, they latch on. Even Lou over at Birds Plus, who I consider an incredible expert, will tell you stories of these birds biting and latching on. Now, he has a pretty small beak, but sometimes the small beaks are the worst ones. I'm not saying I would rather be bit by Rocky, but for some reason, even with my macaw's large beak, if I'm ever bit by him, it's not as terrifying as being bit by Vinny. Vinny says, yeah. He knows, he's just insane. These birds will latch on with a vengeance. And if you have a small kid in the house or you have other safety issues, or like let's say for example, you are going to hold a grudge yourself against a bird that bites you or you're gonna become scared, then this is not the bird for you. And guys, in no way I'm saying, I know I'm gonna get a lot of comments from people being like, my bird is perfect and he's never bit anyone and blah, blah, blah. But you have to understand that people need to be aware of the possibility, which, and that brings us to reason number three. These birds love to chew. Now, you would think that if you give them a good amount of things to play with, things to chew, that's why I'm always giving Vinny like cardboard boxes, all sorts of other materials that he likes to play with, but that's not gonna stop them from eating your book, your wall, whatever. And again, you may have the perfect bird. Like look at my Amazon Leo. This bird has never chewed a thing in his life. Also kind of random. Every bird is different, right? Jersey, she's actually not a big chewer either. And that's pretty common for cockatoos to be chewing up the wood in your house, but we haven't had many issues with Jersey chewing things. So again, every bird is different, but these guys are little bulldozers. The things that Vinny likes to chew is just insane. So if you like to keep your house in perfect condition, a rose-breasted cockatoo is probably not for you. And on top of that, most cockatoos are probably not for you. Just something to consider. All right, number four. These birds are famous for being moody. It's part of their temperament. Now, again, back to the whole Australian thing, you guys will be like, no, that's why we call them cockies, they're clowns. And yeah, I know, like out there in the wild, like you can see that they're having so much fun, they're flying around, they're like totally like the clowns. But when you take those birds out of their natural environment, you take away all the things that they should have other birds to play with and just like trees and fun, they become really different. <laughs> exactly. Like he totally agrees with me. We cannot guarantee them everything to possibly stimulate them. So they're known for being moody and they can also be known for being territorial at the same time. Now, so what is moody? Moody with these birds is that they have a little bit different of some body language behaviors. So your bird could be like kissing you, kissing you, or act like he wants to be pet or act like he wants a head scratch and then you're scratching his head and it's all enjoyable for you and then he's like over it. Whereas the temperament of an umbrella cockatoo, I find to be some of the best temperaments out of all the cockatoos. For those of you guys who don't know, I've had a goffin cockatoo, an umbrella cockatoo, two sulfur crested cockatoos, and my rose breasted cockatoo. And the best temperament for me is an umbrella cockatoo. And although all cockatoos will show you what it is you did that bothered them, it's almost as if these guys are unpredictable. In a way, it's like if I've kissed you five times, I might be pushing my luck with the sixth time, even though you came in for it, you meaning the bird, it's just kind of interesting how they can just suddenly remember that they were annoyed by something
something. For me, it's one of the hardest birds to go back and detect what you could have done. So for example, even with Vinny, I have a great sense of when he's gonna bite. I can feel from the tension in his feet if something made him angry. I know enough to say like, okay, you need to stay back like while I'm carrying him here. I know every little thing that could come in his environment that's going to bother him and how to prevent that. It's kind of like negating things all day long. Yeah, he says, but every once in a while, someone else comes into the mix and like George, for example, George was gone for a week. When he came home, Vinny was so excited. Vinny was on his shoulder for like an hour, being really excited, kissing him, loving him, things that you guys have probably never seen before. And then like after an hour, I kid you not an hour, like George is dancing with him and then George is singing with him. Then Vinny bit him out of the blue. And if I went back and analyzed why, and you guys have to know I have so much experience with birds. The only reason could have been the craziest reason that like if you logically think about it, doesn't make sense. And it was that George was singing a song to him at that moment and he suddenly changed the song. So like he was doing this song, he wasn't even moving around a lot, just like singing a song. Vinny was like all into it. And then George changed the song and then Vinny bit him. And it's almost like, did this bird really get upset that he changed the tempo? Maybe, crazy gangsta, you guys know that. But logically in the world of parrots and parrot psychology, I don't know, right? So he completely turned on George in that moment. So that's what I mean by they are unpredictable and moody. And with that unpredictability, like if you know birds, the way I know Vinny, I'm pretty much able to predict almost anything. Even when you see him dive bombing George, because I know he's gonna do that, I was able to set up the camera, I was able to set up the scenario. I know that's going to happen, it's all really controlled. It's not like there's a crazy parrot around chasing you. It's like, oh my God, I'm gonna turn on the camera and entertain, this is what's gonna happen. So those are just things for you guys to think about. Number five. This is weird. They are scaredy cats, okay? As gangsta as this bird is, if he is scared of something, irrationally terrified, okay? Not like Jersey where she's scared of children and she just stays away. Vinny acts like, I don't know, the apocalypse has arrived, screams like a girl, acts like a big baby, flies around like a maniac, and it's just irrational. Now, I have seen him get over his fears. Like, one of his fears is ladders. Like, he hates ladders, I have no idea why. So I had a ladder in the hallway the other day and I was pretty pleased with the ladder being there because it meant he wasn't even gonna go in the hallway. Oh, not even an hour later, I find him there, he is sitting on the ladder. What happened was he analyzed the ladder's behavior, realized nothing changed, it didn't move, and then he sat on it. He was able to conceptualize that the thing isn't dangerous. Now maybe if that ladder started moving or I would have moved it or put it in a different spot, he would have found it suspicious. They can overcome fear. It's just a matter of them getting used to it, but the way they react when they're scared is something crazy. It's pretty entertaining. Okay, number six. These birds are territorial. Vinny displays a lot of territorial behavior, but not in the way you would imagine. So for example, if another bird goes and sits on his cage, he doesn't really care. He's great at being part of the flock. He also likes to be a little more grounded and low down than other birds because of the way that they forage and play in the wild. Let's say they're all in the aviary together, like he's more playing low and he likes the perches that are low and the other birds like the perches that are high. He doesn't bother anyone and nobody bothers him, but he is not scared of other animals coming into his territory. He will be ready to defend. He will make himself look bigger and he will guard that area. Like let's say he deems something to be his nest, then Vinny will go all out ready to defend its honor. I have seen this bird go after Rocky because Rocky got in his territory of something he was playing with. I thought it was gonna be he's gonna fly away. And Vinny can fly, so you know, you always wanna see how they're gonna interact together in a controlled environment. Because if you don't, you're not gonna know what could possibly happen when you're not around. So I don't mean put your birds in any dangerous situations, but it was important for me to take that moment to see what might happen when it was already happening. And surprisingly, Vinny was able to just take care of himself. But here's why this is a reason not to get a Galakak too. Because if they are 
defending their honor or their territory, they will fly at you. They're one of the few parrots that I've ever seen literally go for someone. I've seen our sulfur crested cockatoo do that and every bird is different individually, but in all my birds, I don't have any bird that's gonna chase you down like Vinny will to defend his honor. So that's something to think about when you have like little kids in the house. And that brings me to my next reason. I don't think they make good rescue birds. And I'm not advising against adopting one. I have rescued and rehomed Vinny in my house and he is one of the best gifts that I've ever gotten in my life. But if you're new to birds, I don't recommend going out and getting a rescue cockatoo of any kind, let alone a gala cockatoo. If you are not new to parrots, then you should rescue as much as you can. You would be a great candidate for rescuing a bird that is more difficult and needs a beautiful home. So that's just something to think about. And with all that negativity that I just said about birds, just remember that it's just so that I could better prepare you in the world because if you know all of the bad stuff, then you'll be much more prepared to commit to a parrot. And what I'm trying to give you guys is the knowledge to be prepared to commit to a bird. But honestly, he is one of the best things that has ever happened to me. And I love him so much, but I do think it takes a special kind a person with a certain amount of time, commitment, and loyalty to have a bird like Vinny and a certain kind of tolerance because you'll have to go through a lot. I'm not saying the perfect bird isn't out there, but Vinny is not perfect. Right, Vinny? Yeah, but I love him so much. All right, guys, please share this video with somebody who thinks that they want a bird and you know that they probably shouldn't get one. I want people to understand how difficult it can be, but I want to educate you all the same. I love you guys so much. Don't forget to check out my links below. If you guys wanna become part of the Flighters Club, get early access videos, exclusive footage, and other perks, don't forget to join. And if you guys want some cool merch with Vinny on it and you wanna be part of the Vinny gang and initiate yourself, then check out my merch. I love you guys so much. Let me know in the comments about your bird. You may have the perfect rose-breasted cockatoo. I don't know, but I'm eager to find out. I love you guys so much. Bye. And guys, don't forget to check out my new line of organic bird food called Marlene's Signature Blend made with tops for small and large birds. The link is below.